Right, not a video I'm very happy to be making because once again, another absolute bottle job performance from Chelsea. We beat 2-1 at Molyneux by Wolves, but the scoreline probably flatters us in a way, to be honest. Wolves could have put more past us today. Again, Chelsea just massively, massively wasteful in front of goal. First 20 odd minutes or something, we started off pretty well, but we can't convert our chances. And this team needs to take a long, serious look at ourselves over Christmas. Here is the 11 we started off with. Obviously, notable absentees in the team. We knew Enzo Fernandez wouldn't be in there. Caicedo not in there. Mudrick made the bench. But a game, you know, a few days, I should say, after a game where he came on, he changed the game, scored the equaliser and then converted his penalty against Newcastle. The fact that then Pochettino still doesn't start him after that. Obviously begs serious questions and tells you what is Mauricio Pochettino thinking on Mikhailo Mudrik at this moment in time. He's still not putting him in there. And I can understand if we had Nkunku on the pitch or something like that, but we didn't. And Mikhailo Mudrik still doesn't make the lineup up more than you. But either way, it probably wouldn't have mattered, would it? We actually started off the game all right. We were half decent, you know. Created a lot in the in the sort of opening 20 minutes or so of the game. But so many times I could say Chelsea should have scored. Amanda Broha, if he had a striker's instinct instead of cutting it back early on when the ball came through to him, would have scored that chance. Raheem Sterling had a couple of times in the game he should have scored his chances, but he wasn't able to convert. And when we look at now, the fact that Chelsea are sitting top of the table... But not the top of the table we want to be. We're top of the table in big chances missed. I think it's 36 big chances missed. Imagine we had a converted just a, a third of those chances. 12 more goals would have seen us, you know, still around the mid-table mark. But at least we'd probably be above Man United or something by now in the league. But we're just not able to do it, you know. And the character is a massive, massive flaw upon this Chelsea team. Because the character is not really there, is it, you know. You think of the fact that, and I will speak about Christopher Nkunku, but Christopher Nkunku comes on, right? And right towards the end, with, with 10 minutes or so to go towards the end of the game, Christopher Nkunku guides a lovely header into the bottom corner. He gives Chelsea a lifeline. Now, do you know what, right? When a team score right at the death and they've got one goal to just claw back a little bit of pride, I can actually emphasise and I can actually accept that maybe they won't go on to get that goal, to get that equaliser, to give our fans travelling all the way home from Birmingham saying to cheer about. However, I can't accept for a team to then not even have a shot on goal after that, to not even apply any sort of pressure. It could be shit pressure, but to at least apply some to give us something to be optimistic about. But we didn't. And it's just the same story time in, time out. And do you know what? You could look at today and you could go, well, Man City failed to win there. Spurs didn't win there. Newcastle didn't win there. Villa didn't win there. And then you can look at it and go, OK, well, maybe, you know, maybe it's not the worst performance from Chelsea. But the context is everything, isn't it? The context is there for all to see. We can't win games where teams come and be resolute and efficient against us. And let's be honest, fair play to Wolves, but Wolves weren't great, were they? It's not like Wolves were on fire today. They had energy and they looked better than us, but it don't take a lot to be better than us at the minute. So what can we really say? Disciplinary-wise... Awful again. Jackson gets another yellow card. Raheem Sterling, I think, misses the next match because of yellow cards. Cole Palmer, I think, misses the next match. And I don't know whether, like, in years gone by, I just didn't really pay that much attention because we weren't doing so shit that we sort of thought that, oh, all right, it makes a big difference if someone misses the match. Maybe we always got this many yellow cards, but I don't think we did. Surely we didn't. And now we're going into the next match. I think it's against Crystal Palace, isn't it? We're going into that match without Cole Palmer, without Raheem Sterling. Now, Cole Palmer's going to be a massive miss. Raheem Sterling was rubbish today, you know what I mean? He, he got in so many positions where he should be converting, should be doing a bit more. And I can actually emphasise Raheem Sterling a little bit because the yellow card um, at the end, he, you know, he's not dived. He can't really do anything about, about it there. But I don't know, man. I don't know. It's rubbish at the moment. Like, we get a little bit of a high from Chelsea and then ultimately we just get that low that follows. And I said the other day, didn't I? The form would suggest this would be the game we lose because every time we claw a little bit of optimism, you know, a draw against City, a draw against Arsenal, a win against Tottenham, inevitably we will always go and lose that next match. And that just shows how naive and how lacklustre when it comes to character um, it is in this side at the moment. And do you know what? People think that Mauricio Pochettino is crazy and Chelsea fans are crazy for wanting more signings. And I'd done a video with Josh the other day and said, oh, maybe we don't need more signings, but clearly we do. We need something because these boys aren't good enough 
in vital moments to be able to become hard to beat, to drag us over the line, to convert our chances and get some wins. Look, people aren't going to like it. I've had stick in my comments before, but I really don't care. The sooner Nicholas Jackson goes to the African Cup of Nations and comes out of this side, the sooner we might realise that actually, you know, he's not an all-out number nine anyway, but playing without that number nine is going to be better for us because Nkunku has showed more clinicalness in what 40 minutes of playing for Chelsea than Jackson showed in four months. So, yeah, he's been rubbish up top. Amanda Broher doesn't look much better at the moment. I know this is doom and gloom, man, but what do you expect? I try and be so optimistic on Chelsea. I try and try and be so positive about us, but I've got to call it for what it is. When it's shit, it's shit. And at the moment, it's shit. So it's just shit, isn't it? So, God knows. I don't know, man. I don't know. What do you guys think? What did you think of the game today? Do you know what? Give some praise where it's due. Um, I thought Madueke was all right when he came on, and now we're looking at the fact that Raheem Sterling and Cole Palmer are out of the next match. We should definitely see him start because he looked creative. The end product weren't there, but at least he done something. And Kunku looks like he's going to be a big, big player for us, a real good player. Obviously, the header wasn't the only thing he did. He played well in there. Cole Palmer played all right, you know what I mean? But our defending's awful. We're so bad at the back. I actually thought Mel Augusto played all right as well, you know. Um, and that's the problem with this team, isn't it? There's lots of individuals that are half decent in this team. Individually, it's all right. And when you take out the ones that aren't so decent and you put in the ones that are and Pochettino eventually gets things right, then we've got a good team there. Um, and we should fast track our progression once it starts to happen. I've still got optimism for this team. I think Mudrick's a good player, you know. I think Sterling, you know... He's a good player, but I don't know. We should really see more from him at this point. Caicedo's a good player. Enzo, the jury's out a little bit on, but I do think he's a good player. Cole Palmer, Melo Gusto, obviously Reese James, if he can get over these injuries. But at the same time, there's so many of them that aren't. Petrovic is decent. Petrovic is good. Uh, definitely have Petrovic in goal over Sanchez off of today's showing. But it's just mad, isn't it? Like, I'm going into matches of Wolves at Molyneux, and I just know we're not going to win. That's just what it is from Chelsea at this moment in time. So, look, man. Less, uh, it's Christmas. I don't want to be too negative. I don't want to sit here and talk about Chelsea and analyse our performance in that much depth because it's just not good enough, is it? It's not good enough. As I always bang on about, I've said this time in, time out, the good thing about having an inconsistent team, if there is ever a good thing, is that one bad performance don't mean you're going to see a bad one in the next game. The negative is one good performance don't mean you're going to see a good one in the next game. So we need to get things right. I st listen, I'm not Pochettino out at all. I think we need to give Pochettino time. Um... I saw a statistic the other day, or, or, or a print screen, whatever you call it, a screenshot, of Arsenal, and it said, this is um, what trust in the process is all about. And it was a run of form under Arteta with Arsenal, where they lost, I think, like, 9 out of 13 games or something like that. One win in there. Um, and now look at them. And I truly believe that Mauricio Pochettino is the right man for this job. I definitely think that. But I think the players are letting him down time in, time out, you know. So... I don't know. You saw Pochettino have a little bit of an angry outburst in the press conference the other day. I'm recording this before he's done his post-match interview. We'll see what he has to say. I imagine he won't be happy. I imagine you lot aren't happy. But listen, it is what it is, man. It really is what it is. Guys, thanks for making it around to the end of another video. Just quickly, I am at the minute editing uh, my review of last night's boxing, the Day of Reckoning card from Saudi Arabia. If you're not a big boxing fan, don't worry about it. But if you are and you're not already, head over to my second channel. I've just launched it. I'm going to be putting this review out later, um, talking all things boxing from last night, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder getting beat, and the rest of it. So head over there. It's linked in the description to this video. People, if I don't speak to you before, have a very, very good Christmas. I really do mean that from the bottom of my heart. And for this year, I'll put out more videos still, but just before Christmas, let me say, I'm so massively grateful to you guys, man. Really, really appreciative for everything you've done for the channel this year. I wouldn't be here without you. I wouldn't have been able to quit my full-time job without you and be doing this all the time. It's crazy. It's mad. So thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Have a good Christmas, guys. I'll see you in the next one.